Hi there, and welcome to the Property Success Academy Success Tips. My name is Divya Mystery, and I'm here today with Saj Hussain. So, in this success tip, I'm going to talk about why invest in property. We've done a video on why to invest in property. This is the second video. Uh, so, in the last video, we talked that about the fact that house prices increase over a period of time on average they continue to go up and up and up and up so the red line in this diagram is the average increase in the house prices and the blue line is the actual house prices or what they call the real house prices as you can see the real house prices fluctuate above and below the average now what is the real house price as explained in the last uh, video the real house price is basically the increase in the house price adjusted for for inflation what do we mean by that well the increase in the house price we take the increase in the house price and we say okay inflation uh, the house price may have increased by 10 percent this year inflation is 2.5 percent so inflation is the uh, average increase in the cost of living in the country so the cost of living has gone up by 2.8 five percent but the house price has gone up by ten percent so if you adjust that then house prices on in real terms have gone up by seven point five percent so we talked about that and we talked about how leveraging your one residential property over a ten year period can get you to a stage where you got a portfolio worth eight hundred forty thousand uh, pounds with mortgages of three hundred thirty thousand pounds and equity of five hundred and ten thousand pounds with no mortgage on your residential property over a 10 year period so in this video I'm gonna concentrate on the cash flow because it's all well and good investing in property to get capital gains and to remortgage later on or sell on later on and get lump sums amount of money creating wealth but what we really want to do is get a good return on our money right because the beauty of property is that you can set it up in the way that it doesn't need massive amount of work from you on a regular basis and you can you can get income coming in passively yes now and then you have to put some work in but generally speaking it's quite passive in that you do some you set it up at the beginning and then the money keeps coming in and in and in you pay the bills but you have some profit left over so what can you expect in return for your money from a property so remember we started with a residential property we worth 120,000 pound we assumed it's worth 120,000 pounds and we assumed that we took a uh, loan to value of 75% of the £120,000. So that's £90,000 worth of mortgage that we took out on our residential property. We split that £90,000 that we took out into three pots and each pot bought a property. We used £25,000 of the, of the £30,000 in the first pot to buy the first property and £5,000 of that went into the fees of purchasing the property and went into maybe any minor re light refurbs that you need to do, you know, a few bits you needed to touch up, etc. Void periods, etc. And so we bought three properties. So now we really want to look at the return on the money that you put in or what's called Rocky most people get this concept confused with return on investment let me explain the difference first so return on investment is the same as the yield of the property so what does that mean that means how much money does that asset produce on a yearly basis on an annual basis relative to the purchase price the total amount of money that has gone into obtaining that asset now yield is very important you have gotta get a good yield on your, pro your property however what it doesn't tell us it doesn't tell us the return that we get on our money the money that we've put into the deal it tells us the return of the asset but remember we're leveraging some of that um, some of the money that we're getting in that property in fact we're leveraging 75 percent of the money that we're getting to purchase that property we're leveraging we're borrowing from the bank 75 percent of that and the other 25 percent we're putting in so really what we want to know is what is the return on the money that we've put into the deal so if we take the, the first property for example and we bought it for a hundred thousand pounds and we've got a 75 percent mortgage on that so 75 thousand pound mortgage now we're going to assume we've got a 4.8 percent interest rate it may vary a bit more or a little bit less but 4.8% tends to be a quite common uh, interest rate to be paying. So 75,000 pounds 
at 4.8% will get us 300 per calendar month. So that means we're paying the banks 300 pounds per calendar month. Now we're going to assume there are costs of 150 pound per month per property. So where are these costs coming from? Well, you might have a managing agent that charges for managing that property. You have a bit of maintenance to do. Sometimes you're going to get void periods. Uh, there's insurance to pay on the property. Things like that. They're the main categories of things that you'd spend the, this money on. And once in a while, you're going to have to refurb the property. So what I personally found is if you average it out over a long period of time, it roughly comes to between 100 and 150 depends on if you're managing it yourself or you're giving it to an agent to manage. In this scenario we just assume we're giving it to an agent to manage because really as a property investor we should be focusing on what we're good at and what we're good at is investing in property and not managing properties. So if you add up the cost of the mortgage plus the monthly costs uh, for maintenance, insurance etc that comes to a total of £450 per calendar month and we're going to assume that for this property we can get a rental income of £600 per calendar month. Now there are a bit some other strategies out there that are more complicated. We're just going to assume that you're just going to rent this single property on a single let basis. This is a bog standard buy to let property in the most simplest form possible. Um, so you're going to get £150 a month profit from that because 600 minus 450 is £150 per month positive net cash flow. Now this is really important. You see a lot of people talk about this is the cash flow, it's £300 a month. But what they don't factor in is the fact that there are other costs. There are costs involved, there are costs of insurance, there's a cost of maintenance, and um, management costs etc etc, void periods. And what we, I like to do, and what Saj likes to do, is you know make it realistic. You know w why say there's three hundred pound a month cash flow when actually you're only going to end up getting one hundred fifty pound a month. So this is net income. This is the money that you're left with in your bank account after all costs. So one hundred fifty pound a month. So what does that mean? That means it's eighteen hundred pounds a month income from one single let property. Now we've got three of these. Remember, so we've got three. So if we have a look at that, that's £1,800 a month times 3, which is £5,400 per annum income from your portfolio. Now some of that money is going to go towards paying the interest or repaying the £90,000 that you borrowed on your residential mortgage. Because you know, you're going to have to pay some money on that because you, you've leveraged it. And some of that you're going to keep. Now what we're going to do, we're not going to go into detail exactly how much goes to repay the £90,000. Because what we've assumed is over a 10 year period, the, the other properties are going to increase in value sufficiently to give you that money back anyway. So we'll just assume that the income is £5,400 per annum. But please, you know, because, because uh, interest rates and the way that mortgage companies work for residential properties, there's so much variation that is very difficult to... A predict how much that ninety thousand pound is going to cost, but please make sure you factor that in. Okay, now if we only took the five thousand four hundred pound per annum and multiply that by ten years worth of rental income, that's fifty four thousand pounds net income over ten years. It's fifty four thousand pounds you are going to earn from just renting this property out. So these three properties over ten years. So what does that mean? What does that mean in terms of the ROCI, Rocky? So I talked about yield earlier and yield is the total return the asset gives relative to the amount of total money put into the deal. What is Rocky? Rocky stands for return on cash invested. What does that mean? That means the return on the money that you've put in. Now although we've remortgaged our residential property, it's still your money. It's still money you're putting in because it's coming from your bank account. And that's the return we want to look at. What's the return for the money that's coming from you? So, if we the way we work that out is we take the total net income of these properties. Remember, net income always because if you take the gross income, there's other costs to come out and it's not realistic. So, the total net income of these properties is £54,000 over 10 years. And the total amount of money invested in these uh, properties is £90,000. Now remember that £90,000 you're still going to get that back out because of the equity you've got but this is just purely looking at the cash flow relative to the net cash flow relative to the amount of money you've put in. 
Now, if we do fifty-four thousand pound divided by ninety thousand pound, that's sixty percent return over ten years, or six percent per annum. Now, how many banks do that? That's six percent per annum on your money, and that's only using a very simple concept of getting three normal single let buy to let properties. We haven't even touched on how we can increase the the uh, rental income from that because there's lots of different ways there's HMOs, the lease options, etc., etc. Lots of different ways you can uh, maximize the amount of money that you're getting from each property and really boost your cash flow. I mean, the the amount that you can get from properties it, uh, will totally outweigh what the the figures that you see just here. So, from this example, we can see that we can get a six percent income. Banks might give you two, three, four percent on your money. If you put that money into uh, properties, you're going to get six percent. Remember, we haven't even saved this money up. This is what we've re-leveraged on our res residential property. We effectively, this is free money, and you don't even pay tax on it. You don't pay tax on that money until you recoup the uh, initial investment that you've made, which is that ninety thousand pound. So that's the return that you're going to get on the cash flow basis you're going to earn five thousand four hundred pound per annum just from single let properties nothing complicated so i just want to briefly touch on well what does that mean overall what does that mean uh... in terms of overall return to you Well, remember we leveraged our initial properties to seventy five percent so we've got ninety thousand pounds out it was worth hundred and twenty and in ten years time that is worth two hundred and forty thousand pounds we split that £90,000 pot into three pots and we bought three properties for £100,000 each. Each property that we bought for £100,000 we put a 25% deposit down or £25,000 and we used the remaining £5,000 for any work, minor works that needed doing and any fees to purchase the property. So we purchased each property. Now each property in 10 years time will be worth double on average is between 7 and 12 years we can't guarantee this but we use it as a rough guideline that in 10 years time it's worth double what it was previously so each each buy to let property that we've got was worth 100 and now is worth 200,000 that means the equity in the property the amount of wealth that we've got in that property is 100,000 pounds okay so you've got 100,000 pounds worth of equity in each and every property um, so that's 300,000 pounds plus the equity that we've got in the, our residential property so and so our total value of our portfolio including our residential property is eight hundred and forty thousand pounds now the net cash flow from each property is eighteen thousand pounds over ten years so what does that mean that's eighteen hundred pounds each per annum multiplied by ten is eighteen thousand pounds per property and in total that's fifty four thousand pounds in total so if we take the cash flow from each property and the equity we've got in each property so hundred thousand pound equity in each property plus the eighteen thousand pound cash flow from each property that's a hundred and eighteen thousand pounds in total now if you multiply that to if you look at that on a per property basis the return on capital employed so the initial thirty thousand pounds that we put into each property 118 divided by 30,000 is 393 percent over 10 years or 39.3 percent per annum now think about that overall you've got a return of 39.3 percent per annum so where which bank is going to give you 39.3 percent per annum there's very few out there that's a massive return you know, almost 40% every single year on the money that you put in. You can double your money in the space of two or three years. And this is what the richest people in the world are doing. 70% of the UK and the worldwide rich list invest in property because they understand that this is what it's doing. The property is increasing value and creating cash flow without them having to even touch the thing. And what this means is over that period of time, the total loan to value over the portfolio between the residential property and the three properties that you purchase is less than 40%. So the total number of mortgages that you have uh, relative to the value of all of them properties put together is less than 40%. That means you've got very few mortgages there. You could probably, in fact, you could sell one of the houses and probably pay off 
well a couple of the you could if you wanted to sell the the two out of the three um buy to let mortgages and pay off the third one and your residential mortgage right so there's a massive amount of equity in there and you've basically increased the, the your capital initial capital by nine uh thirty nine point three percent per annum which is a massive return and this is the reason why we invest in property because it's massive leverage and you know what you should use this presentation to go out there and explain to potential JV partners etc why in property is such a fantastic investment